So one of the hardest um, Christmas stories to adapt in the eyes of many people is Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol. Now I bring this up for, ver for a variety of two reasons, basically. One is on Christmas night, one of the movies me and my family were watching to kind of buy the time before we left was the 1951 adaptation of the story. Then on top of that, the second reason is because here on YouTube, Selpex, known as one of the prominent brony Pegasus fans of MLP FIM, recently did a two-part video series on the various animated adaptations of A Christmas Carol. And in this two-part series, she basically talked about how surprised she was at how some of these animated adaptations were very book accurate to a point, even almost word for word. You know, from Mr. Magoo, to the Flintstones, to the uh, stop motion on the motion capture Disney one with Jim Carrey. But I bring all this up, well, you know, for one obvious reason, for one obvious question that a lot of people would ask. Why is A Christmas Carol hard to adapt? Why is, you know, Charles Dickens' most iconic story very hard to bring to life on the big screen or the small screen or on Broadway itself? Why is it hard? Why do studios, you know, focus on certain aspects of the story instead of fully telling it? Well, I think I know of a reason. That reason basically being that A Christmas Carol is one of the longest, most um, hardest things to read uh, while you're sitting down. I mean, basically, it's a book that takes a while to read. I'll give you an example. This here is The Outsiders. Now, we know that there's an adaptation of it. Now, when you read The Outsiders, and then you watch the movie, you would say that it's almost word for word or scene by scene. And in fact, it kind of is. You know, not completely, but it kind of is. Now, with that said, though, there is something else. And that is the Bible. Now, recently, over the past several years, we know that you know, many studios made for television uh, and cable, if you will, have tried to adapt the Bible for on-screen presentation. There, of course, was the epic series, The Bible, and then there was the follow-up, A.D., which basically tried to go book for book. But even people there would say that even though they tried to go book for book, uh, that they basically focused on certain aspects and moments that took place throughout the Bible. Now, the only way you would actually get a true adaptation of the Bible is getting one of those Gospel series DVDs that they brought out, like the Gospel of John, the Gospel of Mark, the Gospel of Matthew, the Gospel of Luke, you know, the Gospel of Acts. You get the idea. You know, that's basically how you'd be able to get like a full-fledged, true adaptation of the Bible word for word. But, with that said... I bring all this up because, again, Christmas Carol kind of falls in a similar category to where when you look at a Christmas Carol, you know that from a book standpoint, it's a very lengthy read. It's a read that could take you quite a while to get through um, and process. It may take you several you know, sit-throughs in several weeks just to get a true... Uh, appreciation and a true aspect about what's going on in the story, as well as a true appreciation of how long Charles Dickens had to sit down back in those days, you know, several centuries ago, and write it down by feather pen. But again, the question is, though, why is it so hard to adapt? You know, that is the major question. And again, it's for, and again, various reasons. One, the fact that, like I said, it's like if you try to adapt fully the Bible. You know, if you try to fully adapt the Bible word for word for word, something like the Bible series would be longer than what it was. Something like the follow-up AD would be longer than what it was. You know, if you try to adapt the full-fledged, you know, word for word, scene by scene, moment by moment, uh, story of Moses, you know, which is always associated with the Ten Commandments movie, 
you know, we would be here for the next several days, if you know what I'm seeing, or if you know what I'm saying, just trying to finish that movie. I mean, when that movie gets aired on ABC every Easter or around that time frame, you're basically looking at a movie that's about four or five hours long in broadcast terms. And basically, it has to start like around 7 p.m. Pacific, and it ends almost at midnight. So you're looking at a very lengthy movie. But again, I bring all this up because if the person behind that film decided, hey, I want to adapt everything about Moses in the story. I want to go from beginning to end, every moment, every second, word for word. Again, we would be here for several days. I mean, that broadcast can start at 7 p.m. on a Sunday night and not be finished till probably Friday you know, evening, 7 p.m. Pacific. You're looking at about a five-day stretch of a film nonstop being shown. That's basically what an adaptation, a true word-for-word, scene-by-scene, moment-by-moment adaptation of the Ten Commandments, you know, the story of Moses, would be like. And again, I bring all this up because this is why when you look at adaptations of A Christmas Carol, why certain people focus on certain moments and aspects of it and not try to be word for word, scene by scene, moment by moment kind of deal. Because if they were, you'd be looking at a movie that's probably on par of something like, let's say, Cleopatra, but with the, uh, like Cleopatra, I'm trying to say, which starred Elizabeth Taylor, or King of Kings, or Ben-Hur. Now, I know you're thinking that sounds like a little bit of a stretch, but when you think about it in reality, it's not far off. I mean, why do you think, depending on the adaptation that's done, a lot of these movies run under, you know, you know, at length, you know, two hours at most, if not two and a half hours, but mostly at two hours? Why do you think they're barely around that time frame? Because... Basically, the people that are adapting it for the screenplay realize that if they try to adapt word for word, moment by moment, scene by scene from the original novelization by Charles Dickens, again, we'd be here all night. We'd be looking again at a broadcast very similar in identity, if you will, to maybe Sound of Music or Ten Commandments. It'd basically be almost a three-hour, if not three-and-a-half-hour length film. And that's not an exaggeration. That is the truth if they wanted to go, you know, scene-by-scene, word-for-word, moment-by-moment. That's why when you look at these various adaptations, live-action or animated, you know, you only get certain aspects. Now, true, as mentioned before, some have tried to tackle, you know, going word-for-word, scene-by-scene, you know, in various adaptations in the past. Again, one of the most recent ones is Disney's A Christmas Carol with Jim Carrey. You know, they tried to go that route. And some would say that was probably the best version, one of the better versions at the time. A little darker than some of the ones that came before it. But still, it was a very good, you know, adaptation. The second closest, some would say, would be the 1951 adaptation with Alistair Smythe. You know, the fact that that one gave us moments and scenes that you don't see anywhere else in any other adaptation. Not even the Disney ones. The point that I'm getting at is this. A Christmas Carol is a great story. It's a book story that a lot of kids and teens and those in college and all that, you know, read during the Christmas season and maybe even do some kind of performance or read along or read through for an audience before they go on break. It's a story that if you like, if you're a reader of books, you want to have in your collection because if you want a true telling of A Christmas Carol, of the story of Scrooge and his redemption, you want to have the actual book. You know, so when you look at the various adaptations, again, the reason people don't always go word for word, scene by scene, moment by moment, is because they know that they would have a lengthy story on their hands that is in the same category in vain, if you will, lengthwise, if not story-wise, as things like Ten Commandments, Cleopatra, Ben-Hur, you name it. It, Sound of Music, you name it. It'd be a very long presentation, 
you know, from a film standard, whether it was television film or theatrical film or streaming nowadays, it'd be a very hard adaptation to do. And a lot of people know that. A lot of people know uh, that's a fact. And that's why, again, a lot of these filmmakers, a lot of these screenwriters and, you know, um, directors and producers and studios opt to go for a more simpler route by focusing on certain aspects of the film of the story and not the full aspect of it. Now, the question is, do I think maybe we'll get something that's a full adaptation of Christmas Carol in the future? Absolutely, I think we're going to get a full adaptation down the line. I think nowadays that with technology evolving and getting better and making things a little quicker to accomplish and bring to life, I think we are on the verge of sooner or later a new Christmas Carol story. And I'm sure there's several in the works right now. But I'm pretty sure we are right now on the verge of another one coming to the big screen. If not to a streaming service, if not to television, that's going to be a true adaptation of the story. And I'm talking word for word, scene by scene, moment by moment, nothing left out. I truly believe that moment's coming. And it might be sooner than you think. Now, you might say, well, what if they don't decide to do that? What if they opt to make it more simpler and still stick with the basics of let's focus on these moments and leave out these? Well, if they decide to do that, that's their choice. But I'm feeling, in my opinion, but I feel I should say in my opinion, that we are going to get a true adaptation real soon. Because you're looking at a lot of these movies that are coming out, all these new adaptations of classic fairy tales and novelizations and holiday stories and all that. And you start noticing that these newer adaptations are going down a road that people have been wanting. You know, and that's going down the more, you know, going down the road that's a almost true word for word, moment by moment adaptation. I mean, you look at the new Pinocchio movie that's out in theaters that was made in Italy and dubbed for English audiences for release here in the States. As well as you look at the animated stop motion one coming out next year on Netflix and maybe the remake being made by Disney and you're looking at, you know, three, you know, adaptations that are going to be probably more truer to the original source material, you know, than the 1941 animated one uh, was in the long run. So... You know, that that to me tells me right there that we will probably get a true adaptation. I mean, why do you think, you know, Disney and other companies are doing these live action adaptations? Because they want to add in moments and scenes and, wor and wording, you know, from the original source that they couldn't do in the other very, in the other uh, adaptations that came before. You know, they want to go down those roads that they couldn't do they couldn't go before but now they can so when i look at the fact that you know for the past several years if not the past you know like 20 years or so we've been getting more closer adaptations you know almost word for word moment by moment of charles dickens classic story to me it makes me firmly believe in my opinion that we are going to get an eventual word for word moment by moment scene by scene adaptation in the future and yeah it might be one of the and it might be when it's all said and done the longest adaptation of a christmas carol ever seen but in the end it'll probably be worth it and whether or not it's live action it's cgi animation a combination of both stop motion you know who knows the point that I'm getting at, and it probably will be the combination of live action CGI, but the point I'm getting at is I is the fact that I truly believe sooner than later we're going to see that announcement happen. And there are going to be people, believe it or not, and this is my opinion, I could be wrong, but there will be people that will flock to theaters to see it if it's on the big screen, just to see a true, finally see a true adaptation of the story. Or there will be people that will flock to the television screens to watch it, you know, if you will, on the television screens, on the small screens, 
and be able to pause it whenever they want if they if it gets a little too long for them if you know what I mean and then resume where they left off but again I truly believe we're going to get an adaptation I really do I truly believe we're getting one and it's coming soon when will that happen God only knows but I think it might be sooner than we think so in the end I know I may have sound like I rambled a bit but in the end when I look at a story like A Christmas Carol, I look at it as being one of the truly hard to adapt stories out there, but not impossible to adapt. If you take the time and effort to truly want to bring a full, you know, realized adaption, nothing left out, you know, adaption of A Christmas Carol to the small screens, all the big screens, or even Broadway, I truly believe it is possible. I truly do. But when you look at the various adaptations that came before it, you know, it is understandable why they would focus on certain aspects and moments and not go all the way. Because they basically don't want people to have to sit through a story that's going to drag on and on and on. Like I said, the two closest in a lot of people's opinions, and even mine, is the motion capture one with Jim Carrey by Disney and the 1951 one with Alistair Smythe um, that was shown on Christmas night on FXM. But to me, again, guys, I truly believe, like I said at the end, that there is the possibility, if not probably more so than before, a strong possibility we will get a full-fledged, nothing-left-out adaptation of the story uh, sooner than we think. But again, all I wanted to do was come on here and give you my opinions, you know, unscripted without anything to, you know, read off or anything like that or memorize. Just give you my thoughts as to why Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens is one of the hardest Christmas stories, if not one of the hardest stories, period, to adapt for the small, big screen or Broadway. And why most adaptations focus on certain aspects of the book and not the full-fledged story. But let me know what you guys think. Do you think eventually we will get a full-fledged, nothing-left-out adaptation of A Christmas Story? Or do you think if we get another adaptation, it will just follow suit like the others? Let me know down below. Comment if you like, and I am out.